Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, this is a bit of a different video to what I usually do. I haven't been colouring for a very long time and therefore try to stay away from um, the more instructional sorts of videos. Um, the main reason for this is I am still learning um, technique and form I suppose is the way and proper procedure for colouring because um, yes I am a hobbyist but um, I I want to learn and improve and create the best pictures that I can. Um, I've literally put this here so you have something to look at while I waffle at least. Um, and over the last 10 months that I've been colouring, I have learnt a lot and by default my colouring skills have improved a lot. Um, a lovely subscriber of mine sent me a message asking about colour combinations for crayon pencils and that is how this uh, strange hybrid video has come about. So. We are going to get into that, but before we do so, um, I've noticed I have quite a few beginners uh, that watch the channel that are still learning um, the more basic techniques and trying to improve their basic skills so they can get, well really the reason we do this is to get the maximum enjoyment from our beloved hobby, basically. Um, and so... I were, wanted to just kind of take you all along my beginning journey over the last, you know, last few months of what I've found to be useful um, and what I've learned a little bit. Um, so for the beginning, I found colour tube, and it is my most useful and my most used resource. Um, I learn things the best with theoretically. Um, I read a lot and I process information and learn that way. Um, so I have purchased a few different books over the last few months um, and probably will continue to do so because I do enjoy um, going through things um, and I started that collection with the Helen Elliston I'm trying to find it in all my pile of video stuff um, so I have the colorist special effects I only have but one um, I believe she has four of these um, and I I will be slowly collecting them because I do enjoy looking through them. Um, I've kind of put some useful little notes across the top of mine of what I actually found in here when I had a click through, uh, flick through that I thought mm, that would be interesting. I'd like to use that as a reference so that I can actually use these reference materials quickly on the go when I'm learning how to colour different objects. This is a teaching manual so obviously I will not be um, showing you inside these books but they're just the sorts of things that I've collected um, to help with well learning my hobby. Um, the other two very useful books that I got or the Jennifer Zimmerman ones and hers are The Secrets of Colouring 1 and 2 which is both of the books that she has and I also enjoy these. As you can see I have already marked one of mine for some of the useful items that I found in there and the other one is a little bit newer to me so I haven't done that process yet. Um, I have very, very recently, because I, I've only just found it, I think I watched it on someone else's channel, picked up this Denise Howard book. All these books I purchased from Amazon UK, by the way. Um, this one is 101 Textures in Coloured Pencils. 
this actually kind of shows you how to draw them but it works in essence exactly the same as it would if you were colouring them in from line art and I just kind of like to have a little look at these at night um, usually when I'm in bed I've found um, this hobby really has taken over and um, just a little look for ideas and to learn some of the skills and improve upon what I am currently able to manage. The other thing I found very useful um, when I started um, was colour wheels. I have these two um, but I particularly like, I saw this on someone's YouTube channel, if it's you let me know, I can't remember who I watched. Um, I believe this is actually um, for uh, threads, uh, the pick, point and match rainbow colour selector and it's the colour sense system and what this actually has is the different tones of each colour so you can match them up to the colour that you've got and then it works the same as all wheels by being able to pick your three either your analogous colours or your complementary colours and you can have three, four, five usual um, collection of colours and it kind of gives you a bit of information on the back for how to use it and then I've got a very standard pocket colour wheel um, that again also kind of gives you information if you add different colours into these colours what colour will you get just to kind of help you along a little bit uh, and again your complementary and your um, good colour picks that would go together well or shown with these and, and they can be quite handy um, if I'm being completely honest I rarely use any of these when I actually colour <laughs> um, I'm one of these terrible people I love to read the reference books and I enjoy them for the books they are and then you know I'm at work and I've got my colouring page and I've picked my five pencils and I just have a go and see what happens um, the one thing I have started doing um, learning to do is at least test my coloured pencils <laughs> On a different piece of paper first especially in these lovely this is the color of Riage wild book by Emmanuel Collin book one um, on these lovely papers obviously I do try to avoid just going ham and uh, making a mess is the main most useful thing that I've learned have a piece of paper in fact this is probably my this piece of copy print paper is possibly the most valuable tool you will ever have. Um, I also have the Practical Colour Combinations book by Naomi Kuno. Uh, and this has got like a few hundred, 2,500 colour combination samples to it. And obviously you can see I have quite a few marked that um, I can flick to for certain inspiration. And again, I find this just more useful as a book that I quite enjoy um, browsing through every now and again. But I have, as I've started to colour more and get a little bit more confident, I am starting to pull these kinds of things that little bit more um so uh, let's see now the other thing i did want to mention is when i started coloring i got very frustrated um i watched many very talented colorists um and saw the most beautiful pictures and pages and got very irritated with the way that my pencils worked, laid down, you know, did what I wanted them to do in the way that I wanted them to do, got rid of white spaces. And the thing is, 
I have some very expensive pencils that are beautiful and gorgeous and I use all the time and I have some very mid-range run-of-the-mill you know that in-between category between about 50 to 100 pounds that is still slightly luxury but not your polychromos madness that I also use a lot and love and then I have Brute Funa and Crayor that I pull on the regular that I also completely love. The only difference is learning that your pencil needs a little bit of help to really create what you want from it. And that includes even on the cheap, this is the dreaded Amazon paper. This was a grayscale, this is the Snow Princess, we did it together. Um, I had an accident, do not have your broom near your gorgeous completed pages and spill it on them uh, is also number one tip. But anyway, I lose my track. So, um, you know, you get very frustrated in not being able to create that same effect. You've got little white speckles on your page, your colours aren't quite meshing the way you want them to and they're not creating what you want them to and you're always going to assume it's your paper, it's your pencils, it's you. Um, and to be honest, sometimes, even with the more expensive things, they just need a little bit of help. And one of my more recent purchases is the Pencil Blend. Um, it doesn't have to be this brand. I th don't think this was particularly cheap, to be honest, on Amazon, but what it is. Um, so this is used to blend coloured pencils, wax pencils and oil pestles, and it's the Zest It Pencil Blend um, that says it doesn't smell and is lying, really. It smells like Pencil Blend. Um, so obviously if you do struggle with scents, you're going to need a window open. But things like this and a pencil blender um, and those little tricks and techniques that some YouTubers do show you at the end um, to just amp up and actually create, you know, kind of the magic it is important and it does make a difference. Um, you don't always need it and it depends on the kind of technique and tone that you're trying to get and it tends to be backgrounds when you do need that extra help, especially on the Amazon paper. Um, I used Orteza pencils on this background in the Amazon paper and it looked okay. And it was irritating me. Um, and then I blended it. And I'm much happier with it. And it really is as simple as that. I could have used a pencil blender. But I've been, I'd have been there all day. And I just, I'm not living that life. I can't be bothered with that. I'm very busy. So I got the liquid pencil blender with a little cotton swab. And I'm now much happier with it. And it is my page. Create what you're happy with. If you don't mind your white spaces, because some pictures actually call for it and they look fine. Like this, I didn't touch her robe because I quite liked that velvety look that you got from uh, leaving the pencil alone. Um, so, yeah, it's just... Some tools are luxury items, um, some pencils are luxury items and many things aren't needed to enjoy your hobby completely. But at that point where you're getting frustrated is the best time to just look up little tips and tricks on YouTube. Um, there are lots of people out there that show you these little bits and pieces and they will just bring that enjoyment to the next level for you when you are starting to feel like you can't create the same effects when really you can. Uh, so getting to um, <laughs> the request, uh, as I said at the beginning, an age ago, a lovely subscriber messaged me and asked me, um, she said she's a beginner 
and she has the cray art pencils and would really like to know a bit of uh, help about colour combinations and selecting colour combinations and how I do that. Don't freak out. <laughs> this is how I store a lot of my pencils. It's a cheap little container box that I got from a thrift store um, and they have my pencils in. I have a little container for each brand so I don't um, store mine by colour, I store by brand so I can pull the pencil type that I want for the videos I do with you guys. Um, don't worry I don't keep my polychromos like this. <laughs> I'm not crazy, but for these kind of pencils, which I actually pull the most often, I find this the most useful. So when I have a colouring page that I want to start, I say I pick out the things that have to be what they are. So if there's leaves, they're going to be green. If she's got hair, is she going to be a brunette or a redhead? What am I going to colour first? Is she Caucasian? Do I need pale pink and pale yellow? And you know, what? when I've got all these things that I have to have together do I then want to add in um, to finish creating my page use your colour wheel obviously you know complementary colours are next to each other on the wheel you have your warm side of the wheel and your cool side of the wheel and if you split those up between your page and your background your warm colours will bring the picture forward and then cool colours in the background will set it apart and help it pop um, little tips and tricks for colouring that books will tell you and YouTubers will tell you and um, you will, to be honest, your eye will start to learn to pick up along the way. So um, I have decided that my page is going to have some purple, some blue, some yellow um, to orange to red. So some colour combinations, they're going to be the same colour. And usually I'll pick between three and four colours, or even two to be two to four colours if they are all say purple. Um, if I am like this page, um, using um, a set of colours, I have a very dark orange in here. I have um, three other oranges in here. I have a bright yellow a pale yellow and a cream so that is an atch an eight color combination just to create orange and yellow um so i then in essence i mean in in honesty half the time i forget and color with it but when i'm actually on um, a page that you know maybe isn't on amazon paper and in one of my lovely books and therefore I'm spending a bit of time trying to work it out properly I will test the colours that I want on my page you need to always have a very pale highlight colour so we've got a very pale pink here as you blend you start with a, a little bit of a thicker colour and then you lay down less when you're blending one colour into another, and these are oil-based pencils, the cray art, so you have to layer up as well. Um, you decrease pressure where the two colours are going to combine. Um, my next colour would then be um, my two kind of mid-tone colours. So I'm going to go pink to purple and all together I'm probably going to pull five different colours so I have my very pale highlight tone and then I have two mid-range tones one in the original colour which is pink that will go from my highlight pink so half pressure over the other colour so they will blend and end up two halves of pressure give one full pressure is the rule into my next colour 
which then again I'll reduce my pressure and it's the same kind of depth but moving into my purple over the top reduce the pressure over the pink and build that up and then I will always have no matter what a very dark tone of the same colour in usually a cool version of it I do not shade in black or grey very often at all I will take the darkest tone of that actual colour in a, a cool tone so that it's like a shadow um, you could add another purple into this if you like so there's always this next purple so I have gone here in the crayon system ballet slippers to this bright bubblegum pink to a mauve to wisteria if you want to and then my shadow colour is violet the main mistake we all make when we start to colour is depth of colour so when you start colouring you would have picked these three colours this would be your highlight this would be your darkest tone and the difference as you learn and progress is this is your highlight and this is your darkest tone do not be afraid to give your objects a large variety of colour depth from all the way to cream to all the way to red and it gives your page what you need it to have so that is my pinky purple I then decide if I actually like all those together you because they are um, oil based needs a couple of layers to start to get a more vibrant payoff from them and actually see the true colours I'll pop a little bit of that extra wisteria in and see if I want to keep it I'm thinking yes actually I think that makes a nice transition from my shadow so it will stay in and I will now just build some of this blend up and see what I want keep and what I want to change and I like them all that is not always going to happen sometimes it's not going to work and you'll change one of the tones out so I now have purple colors for my page the rest of my colors are need going to need to either you know be a complementary next to the wheel colour or an opposite tone that will work nicely um, so like I said I also want to do a blue on my page um, I have again selected the palest blue I could find in my crayon which is the sky blue and of course to keep it pale and keep it light you can just pop fewer layers down it will build it less make sure you fade it and tone it out the next colour along that I've selected is a blue grey as I am less sure of this one I'm going to pop it off to one side this blue grey is a little bit purple for my liking and this is quite warm and this is very cool so I'm actually going to swap that blue grey out and I'm going to try Maya blue you'll notice it's a lot closer in tone to the original blue I have in just a slightly darker shade and much warmer much better I'm then going to move into true blue 
getting quite a bit darker now. Blend that into the next colour. Move that along. And then this time I'm going to finish it. Hmm, let's see actually, is this too purple? You can't always tell with a budget pencil. Sometimes you have to swatch it out just to see. No, that is a lovely deep um, blue. And it is slightly cool tone, so it will work for my shadow colour. So I'm going to pop that on the end blend it into the next colour work my colours back along and that is a very very nice colour combination of blue that would be really nice for water. Um, I would actually add uh, a white highlight with this colour combination. It will look very nice. Whereas with this you could use um, a pinky cream. Uh, so that is Sky Blue, Maya Blue, True Blue and Zafra. I think it says 007. And that is a lovely blue combination that I think I will go right down somewhere. <laughs> Um, that is the other piece of advice that I would generally give you. You'll notice I had pulled another blue that I don't need and don't want because I'm happy with that. So I'm going to pop it to one side. As you start to find colour combinations that you like, um, take the time. Get a little notebook, any kind of cheap one, doesn't matter. Write the page, the book, the colour combinations, what... Um, colour codes they are and what pencil set they're from and then pop a little colour swatch onto there even put next to it if you know you the kind of person with time for this what it is on the page that it, you coloured so that you have these lovely colour blends collected up and that you can also then reference on the page you've coloured um, with them to have a little look and actually see um, if it's useful for another colouring page because as you colour and collect these blends you know I've um, just started recently watching people um, when they do their skin tones and writing them down and then swatching them into the, my book um, as a colour combination and popping the colours on and the pencil set that it is um, to just start to collect my own colour library. A lot of people that colour on YouTube and they create the tutorials or the Let's Colour videos will either tell you the colours they're using as they go along um, and they usually always tell you the pencil sets and they will pop it down below in their comments and if you're watching and seeing certain colour combinations that you think, wow, that set of hair colour is fabulous write it down, pop it in your book and start to collect colour swatch combinations. It doesn't matter if they are your own, a com you know, you've collected them from people, you will quickly start, you know, technically I've just added two to my library right now, definitely this one. Um, sometimes if I'm doing something simpler, I will just do a little three-tone blend. I will very often add either white or cream into my blends. I don't consider them a part of it. I just always have them on the side and will add them in as I go if I need. If I need. Um, and again, don't be afraid to go from very pale to medium to dark of any colour. Uh, so this you can't even see that because my light's too good. But that is also a very nice uh, yellow combination. Going to, and I actually have a very pale yellow on there and a very dark yellow. And you can't really see, but they are very different in tone. Um, and that set is dandelion to yellow to mustard and i'll be honest if we add grab ourselves a brown and add that 
as our shadow tone. That would make, obviously I'd already burnished my yellow. You, your crayon will blend better than that, I promise. They are actually very nice creamy pencils. Um, especially, I think, um, someone, one of my subscribers says she picked them up for $20 in America. I mean, 120 pencils, oil base, $20. That, that is crazy, to be honest, for you know the work you can create from them again one nice simple um beautiful color combination just from having a little go and popping them down that would make um probably a nice gold um i would then add one even darker um cool toned brown onto that reduce the pressure of this brown as i blend in and uh, that should make a nice color the last one I wanted to have a go at, I've pulled this um, kind of orange, peach to orange to red uh, to have a go with. So again, we start with a very pale colour. This is Creamsicle. It's one of my favourites in this set. And I'm not sure if that's just because it's called Creamsicle or not. But I do tend to use it a lot. Fade it out as you go. I then have this mid-toned, it's called Orange. It's um, warmer and darker than the other colour by probably a degree more than it should be. So just a little bit easier as you blend it over. And then reduce the pressure for the next layer. And then I have Ferrari Red and Chili. And I'm going to take Ferrari Red, nice and gently. And of course you could add a yellow into the beginning of this and you've got a really nice uh, yellow-orange-red blend. So, you know, you can extend your blends, no problem. And then we'll go into this chilli. Ooh, I thought it was scratchy then, but it's actually my off-centred lead. Can you see that? The wood's to the end of that I need to sharpen that pencil let's sort that out my trusty Tigo that I thought was a crock when I started and then I got one <laughs> and I've changed my tune it, it, every time I use these I'm shocked by the vibrant colours you can create. Um, everybody has different tastes in the colours that they prefer and um, the kind of pages they like to create. So some people like pastel pages or more vintage colours, more um, darker gothic tones and some people like vibrant bright colours on their page and sometimes it depends on your mood for which one you prefer um, but I do tend to like quite bright intense colour combinations again beautiful so that one is a creamsicle to orange to ferrari red to chilli um, it's a case of sitting and playing and all you have to do is pick a very pale tone, two or three medium tones and one very dark, cooler tone. And you will generally either hate them and adjust a couple of the colours in the middle or have found yourself a new um, colour combination. I'm going to do one more because I think for most of us... Um, Probably one of our beginning pages tend to be the Joanna Bassfords. Um, so let's be honest, it's going to be paramount that you have a nice green combo you can use. So I literally do that every time. I just pull out a wad of greens. Um, I decide on the fly, do I want warm or cool? Uh, 
I take a very pale, so I'm going for a warmer, um, kind of a yellow tone. I'll then take something a little bit darker and a bit darker again. So I have my more mid-tones and then I'll find something as dark as possible. Um, to finish that off in a, a cool tone if I can. And I would generally with a green mix use a, a yellow highlight. So maybe a cream yellow. Um, or a cream. Um, I, I tend to do that rather than a white highlight. It's just preference. So we're going to try lime. Uh, going into apple green. Quite pleased with myself really. I think I'll be writing a few of these into my book. To be honest, uh, and then true green. It doesn't help that I haven't sharpened off of these yet, so they have a flat corner to them. There we go, that's better. Maybe slightly warmer than I meant to go. But actually really like that yellow, um, that yellow to vibrant green. Because if you did want to add, say, dandelion for a bit of a highlight, that's also going to go quite nice. So then I have a, this deep green. Which... Uh, is gorgeous and probably could act as your darkest colour to be honest but I just want to see if I like this pewter green no no I don't <laughs> so we would end it at deep green deep green to true green apple green to lime just for a nice leaf combination and you can highlight it with a cream um, I highlight blue with white green with cream orange with a, a pale yellow and my purple to pink I would add a, an almost white pink to that um, if I wanted to you know kind of add that little shiny highlight to like a, a, a smooth surface item on my page and that is uh, one two three four five colour combinations chosen for that page um so yeah as i've said before i am um, a relatively new hobbyist and therefore no expert to any of this i can only tell you how i do something and how i prefer to work and what i found to be useful to me um and then you know you need to adapt that to the way that you work and you prefer and you know mold these things into your own creation that will be useful for you and uh, hopefully you will soon have a book full of uh, beautiful new blends to use on your pages and you will surprise yourself in the fact that to be honest very often you're going to pull your little box of pencils and try a few colours on a page to just pick the ones that you fancy on that day. Uh, if you like this kind of video please pop uh, press the like button 
below and if you find the channel enjoyable please subscribe to my channel um i wanted to say a massive thank you um as i i've just very recently popped over the 500 threshold um which is actually ridiculous to me <laughs> that uh, i managed to get that many people to uh, click the button so uh, and subscribe to the channel so i am ridiculously pleased at this moment um i need to give you a very great big thank you uh, for bothering to watch this <laughs> and uh, i will see you in the next video